Distinguished future physicians, welcome to Stomp on Step 1, the only free video series that helps you study more efficiently by focusing on the highest yield material. In this video, we're going to be covering purine salvage pathways, as well as some related diseases such as Leshnai syndrome and how it can affect renal stones, gout, and some other things. This is the second of my seven video series on genetics, so I suggest you check out all of these when you are finished. These next two slides were originally one big flow chart, and I wish I could show it to you like that, but I couldn't figure out a way to get it all fit on the video and still be legible. Um, you can see here, this first slide shows you how you get down to hypoxanthine and guanine, and then the next slide shows you what happens to hypoxanthine and guanine when there's too much of it. I will post that as one big flow chart on my website for whatever page I make for this video. So you can go there and get that. Purines are obviously just the A and G or guanine and anonine. And these nucleic acids are constantly being recycled in the body as all the nucleic acids are. This salvages free purine bases, which can be reused to make new RNA or DNA and saves the resources that would be used to make completely new purines. When DNA or RNA is broken down, either our own DNA or RNA that's being broken down or some sort of DNA or RNA that we're consuming in our diet, it's going to release free guanosine monophosphate or GMP and adenosine monophosphate or AMP. These are the purines you can see here on the flowchart. And these purines are going to have the sugar and phosphate groups removed from them to give you adenosine and guanine. Adenosine is, then goes through an extra step and is converted to the intermediate inosine. When needed, inosine and guanine are recycled by the enzyme hypoxanthine guanine phosphoribosyl transferase, or HGPRT. This guanine and inosine is recycled by this enzyme to give you back new purines, which can then be recycled into new DNA and RNA. Sometimes you have more nucleic acids than you need. So hypoxanthine and guanine are not always recycled. They can also just be degraded if you've got too much. This process involves converting hypoxanthine and guanine into xanthine. And then xanthine is acted on by xanthine oxidase to give you uric acid, which can then be excreted in the urine. When this purine breakdown system is only happening in small quantities, this process is fine. However, if there's an excess amount of purines being degraded, the amount of uric acid will build up in the body pretty quickly because the kidney can only excrete so much. So if you've got a ton of purines being broken down, the uric acid is going to build up in the blood, and that's going to be seen clinically in a couple different ways. When the uric acid builds up in the blood, it's then going to start forming crystals in the joints, which is most notable in gout. And then you're also going to have a lot of uric acid building up in the urine. And it's then going to form crystals in the urine and form kidney stones. Gout drugs like allopurinol act on the system by inhibiting xanthine oxidase, which reduces the amount of xanthine that's converted to uric acid. And when you've got less uric acid around, then you've got less gout. So that's how allopurinol works. Now we can go back to that first slide I showed you, the purine salvage slide, and tie in a few clinical correlations here. A deficiency of adenosine deaminase leads to a buildup of adenosine, which is toxic to B and T cells. This is one mechanism that you can develop severe combined immunodeficiency, or SCID skid, and that's just a deficiency of B and T cells, so it's pretty serious. I'm going to cover that in more detail in the immunology section, but because it ties into this pathway, I wanted to mention it here. A deficiency of the enzyme hypoxanthine guanine phosphoribosyl transferase, or HGPRT, is seen in Lesh Nyhan syndrome. And what happens when you have a deficiency of this enzyme is that none of those purines are going to be recycled back into new RNA and DNA. You'll then have to make completely new purines, which is inefficient on its own, but then you have real problems with all of this extra hypoxanthine and guanine that's being broken down. 
You can see left nine hand syndrome is given a high yield rating of four. For those of you who don't know what that is, it's a rating scale from zero to 10, giving you a rough estimate for how important each topic is for the step one exam. And if you'd like to learn more about that, you can head to my website here. But less than I hand, as I already told you, is a deficiency of that enzyme that's responsible for the recycling of purines. And that deficiency is inherited through an X-linked recessive fashion. And it would be intuitive that you're going to get renal stones and gout because we already talked about how excess uric acid from excessive purine breakdown can give you those. You're also going to have a handful of other clinical presentations that are important to know. You're going to have poor muscle control or spasticity. You're going to have mild forms of mental retardation. And the thing I use as a red flag in any question for lash night hand being the answer is lip and finger biting, which are forms of self-mutilation that are pretty unique to lash night hand. Here are a few related topics that I thought were low enough yield. I decided not to cover them in this video. If you'd like to study these things, there are other resources out there to do so, but I would suggest not spending much time on these topics until you've covered all the higher yield material. That brings us to the end of this video. If you liked it and want me to make more, please use the social media share buttons at the bottom of each web page on my website. When you do that, you help me by spreading the word and you help out your friends by giving them a useful study aid. It's a win-win for everybody.